to Philippians chapter 4. And after service, right after the uh, message, we will have the national anthem and uh, also pray for God's goodness in the continual efforts of this nation. Amen. Now remember, if you take away the church from this nation, America doesn't stand anymore. Got to remember this. This nation is unique. This nation was born together with the cross. So you take away Jesus, you extract it out as much as many people are trying their best with the backup of millions of dollars. Can you imagine people backing those things up? But I want you to understand, Jesus always wins. Amen? Amen. Amen. God always wins. Therefore, stand strong. Philippians chapter 4, throughout a couple of uh, weeks, we have been studying the book of... uh, Philippians, this is the last part that we want to finish, but I want to title it, The Blessings of a Provided Life. People pray for providence all the time. I want to encourage the young people. Providence is an assurance that will be released in stages in your life. Are you with me? It will be released in stages, not all at once. Therefore, you need to practice how to honor God and give thanks as a lifestyle commitment. You don't need everything of God now. You didn't need God to give you a million dollars. That's your life cost from heaven. I give it to you. No, there are other emergencies that you will create for yourself, but God provides for. Amen? I wanted to show you the scriptures today. We're going to anchor from three important points, but it will be very applicable for Lauren, even as she is going as well. Philippians chapter 4, verse 10 to verses 20. Very quick read. One of the hearts, well as there was a repentance that I prayed yesterday, uh, 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 when I looked at it again and I quickly repented, I'm going to tell you why. Verse 10, I rejoice in the Lord greatly, that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You see, Paul was forgotten for a while. He said, now I'm so happy that you remembered me again. Suddenly we are reconnected. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. I wanted to remember those days were snail mail. They didn't even have a mail, mailing system. People have to travel for weeks to travel. But today, in the instant of the communications that we've got, people delay, not in their text, in their mind. I wanted to, I thought so, but I forgot. Yeah. <coughs> I wanted to, but not today. This is my recommendation. When the Lord puts someone in your heart, quickly get it done before it's forgotten. Then you are not guilty of it. Because you don't know why that person is being brought into your mind. You just don't know. Last Sunday I mentioned to you about one of our former church staff who resigned one year after I came here. Very dramatic story of this young man. And he said, I've forgotten all about him because, you know, sometimes when people leave you, there's pain and hurts. And so in in order to let it go, you got to keep forgetting things, not holding on to memories. And because memories have right and wrongs into it, you know. He feels I'm wrong. I think he's wrong and nobody's right. So some of the healing is letting it go. So for two years, I already let it go quietly. And when I woke up, his name popped up. Straight away, in my heart, I said, something is wrong. Quickly told about a church member to call, and his mom was hit by a motorcycle, and she broke a hip. And he was so surprised, yeah, my thousands of miles away, God can put it into someone's heart. I was happy, that means there is no bitterness in my heart, there is no pain, there is no negativity. God can put it because I may not call him, but I still prayed. I called my church members to call. 
Sometimes when they did the pastor's number, nobody calls, attends to the call. I don't know why. They see my number. Oh, he's going to say some prophecy. <laughs> but today I received the text. All the surgery went well. So God can connect. I remember reading a testimony of Reynard Banke. When he went to Africa for the first time, he asked for water and they gave him the well water and he was sick like a dog about to die. And he didn't know what to do. He had no medication. He had no money. Well, he was so sick thinking he's going to die because of the virus, the bacteria. He had a dream. There was a woman in his father's church in Germany praying for him and he could hear the words, you shall leave. After two days, the fever broke out and he wrote a letter to his father. Could you ask what she was doing at this date and at this time? And she rep they replied back at this date and she, this time, she was awoken, awakened by the Lord to pray for Reynard because he's about to die. And she prayed for hours till the peace of God came and the Lord said, now stop, he will be healed. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine what your prayer can do? Now you know why the enemy is stopping us from praying. Why the enemy occupies our day and time by thinking about everything else. And one of the silly things that we do, check our Facebook or check the phone. Please don't touch. Allow the Holy Spirit to talk to you first. Are you following? Don't say yes and touch the first thing, huh? Because we have replaced the phone for almost everything. I mean, if you want to see time, those days we used to have a clock, right? Now use the phone. That's the first thing we touch. And when you touch, you won't let it go. Check all the texts again. Can you imagine how the Lord can wake you up? And here the concern came back. He was so happy that they were connected because this man is in prison. He's not having a normal life. And what kind of prison? It was a house arrest prison, chain to another man, the soldier. That was, even though they were in house arrest, he was not just walking as a free man. His, his hands or leg were chained. He was supervised all the time. Verse 11 says, now that I'm Speaking of being in need, for I've learned in whatever situation, say the word whatever situation. Whatever situation. I am to be content. Wow. I know how to be brought low and how to abound in any and in every circum uh, circumstance. Oh, remember this American way of saying circumstances, correct? Right, I did it well. I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger and abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Yet it was a kind of you to share my trouble. I will stop you and give you my first point. I tell you why I repented for something. I say, how can I miss it? The art, number one, the art of peace, the peace of contentment. Contentment is not being lazy or being callous or we don't have enough so be happy. It's not like being happy psychologically, retuning. It's not about that. It's the art of godliness, contentment. Contentment doesn't mean, well, I have nothing so I'm going to be happy. That is the world. Contentment means I know how to have more and I know how to live even there is less. Not a problem because my faith is bigger. Amen. That's contentment. Contentment is resting in God's providence, not on your ability to bring the income. You know, there are people who are in the sales business, one day it's up and the other day it's down. There are some people who are in the office work, they don't dare to venture into business because they're afraid of this changing environment. In the ministries is as well. One day someone remembers you, someone forgets you, someone gives you, and someone totally ignores. 
Where is our heart? God is giving us the grace of how to be consistent in him and not to be so overly worried like as though in the world. The peace of contentment. But that is a catchphrase that I saw. I was very surprised. Man, I've been reading it hundreds of times. The word content in the Greek simply means it's sufficient in oneself. Self-sufficient, adequate, uh, adequate, needing no assistance, but that is not self-independent. I don't need you. It's not about that. It's by saying, God, I'm not dying. I still have you walking beside me. Amen. But look at the way he said, he said, I found the secret. Verse 12. Only pay attention. My brother, say the word secret. I know how to be brought low if nobody wants to say that. Broad law in the Greek means God creates circumstance in my life that I'm humbled. Suddenly he withdraws certain things, I'm quiet. You know, some people say, God, you know, I'm, I'm surrounded by everybody, I can't pray. Suddenly your friends withdraw from you so that you can pray. Since you don't know how to do it yourself, he helps you. You are forgotten for a while so that you are reconnected with God. Are you following? Now, that may all funny things that we can say, but God does his way, but he has learned how to place his faith, even though when God brings me low, all plenty. Look at that. I know how to be abound. Now, the Greek word abound is another word, which I don't want to go there. Simply means super abound, super supplied, super powerful, feeling all high up, more than what you need kind of feeling. There will always be moments of ups and downs in our lives. Suddenly more income, more income, but there is no expenditure. Suddenly your car broke down, this broke down, bad things happen, this thing happens. All the income and the savings are going. God, how can it go? Well, you save to use it, right? right. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you save to use it, and when you are using it, you're getting upset about it. That's the reason we save, to use it. But what happens then? But God will top it up. Amen. Because it's God's money. Yes. Every time I've got to use it for us or for church or for, for, for good things, for bad things, for funny things, for children things, I know God will top it up. Yes. I can't be biting everybody up. God will top it up. Because he say, ask and it shall be given. But God wants us not to pay attention on, on the things that variables, changes. He wants us to be consistent in him. I know to go down and relax and be humble. And I know how to be happy and spend when I need the money. I know how to be contented in God. My, my testimony and my smile and my service to God is going to ch not going to change like the stock exchange of the day. One day you feel high, one day they come low. Some people are very predictable when you look at their face, which Sunday they are looking how. But we have learned the art, no matter up or down, negative or positive report, my joy is in the Lord. My God shall see me through. Amen. So God is developing that skill inside our spirit man. Ministry is all about that. One day it's up and one day it's down. One day things are feeling so strong. Another day you wonder whether we are in the right place. But God wants to place our heart in the Lord. The consistency. And Paul is saying, listen, this is very important in your life. Each one of us must know this. You must know the secret. Say the word secret. secret. How to live with the plenty. You see, when you don't know how to handle that secret of abundance, if you don't know how to handle that lifestyle, you will fall. And we are seeing that sadly. We are seeing that sadly in many, many lives, especially in the ministry. Can Christian be blessed? Absolutely. Can you be rich? Absolutely, yes. Provided for. Can you be happy and have all the fun? Absolutely, yes. But you, your heart is different, you see. When you have more than what you need, then be joyful as you give to people. Yes. Why we fail? We fail because... We spend it all onto ourselves. But Paul is saying, I know the secret how to handle 
the plentiness God will bring. I know how to handle, even when I have lack, there is a secret how to handle myself. My brothers and sisters, can I ask you, what's your secret? For a child of God, there is a secret. They kneel down and they pray. They either give thanks or they make their requests be made known unto God. That's their secret of sustenance. The more you don't have, the more you will increase in prayer. The more you have, the more you wonder what to do, who to give. I remember when I sold my first house, we put it in the market when I was in Singapore in 1993 or 94, 95. It was a good profit, but was not selling. A lot of people will ask the question in Singapore question, okay? Do you have a shopping mall? Is there a swimming pool? Is there a car park? I sometimes, hello. You've got to ask the condition of the house, not what's nearby. You're not living there, you know. You're living here. But nothing worked out until one day, I decided to kneel down and say, God, I will honor God with the profit and the tithes. I'll give it to you. We had a very small church. We didn't, need, we didn't need that amount of money at that time. So God placed in my heart five pastors who are going through troubled times of the family, lack and poverty, you know. So I called all of them and shared this prophet. This is my tithe that I'm giving to you. Rather than sitting in a bank in a church, it is used for you now. And I'm telling the moment I committed, the house was sold the next fourth day. God was waiting. You see, why God has to hold certain times is your learning lessons time. We know how to give God when it's $50. When it's 100 not too bad. Uh, when it's 300 that's, but when it's in the thousands, would you trust God? So God is to give us lessons, how to learn to give and honor Him even when you have the plenty. What is the secret of a child of God to honor Him? Put all the money in one church. Sometimes the church is a matter of definition, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's funny when I think about it. I'm saying it from my heart, okay? It's funny when I think about it. We pride ourselves in giving millions of dollars into missions and Africa and here and there and, and, and whatever else we have done. But my Samaritan is my next door guy. You didn't even move a finger to help him. It amazes me. You know someone in the church, someone my neighbor. I'm not saying we have to spoil them or feed them and whatever else you I'm saying. But at least your heart is moved with the same compassion, you see. And I, I, I couldn't help myself when I saw my pastor friends. I had f six chairs and I gave two to them. I think I need only four. I may not need more. I saw that they didn't have the money. How can I give it away to someone else? But well, right in front of me, they did not have it. Each of you will have that kind of story that you have done. We all the time focus in the homeless. Now, some of the homeless are rich fellows, you know. We've all respect. Don't tell me I'm not saying. Ask God, what is the secret of my life? Ask him. He will teach you the secret. But please, the secret is not, you did not give to church. That is why you are facing this lack. You did not give money to the church or tithe. That's why your sickness is coming. God is not a New York gangster. If you don't give, I'll send the demons and bash your family up and throw some sicknesses on you. God is not a witch widow guy. I throw some sickness and then you'll start giving because that's how we have made God to look like. He's not. He's your father. He's your father. And I'm telling you what the father does. Do you want to know what the father does? Do you want to know? Sometimes when your tithe is still outstanding, he gives you the money to give the tithe. It's amazing, isn't it? He provides for you so that you'll be right with God. He provides for you so that you'll be right before the Father. That's what the mediator does. He redeems us. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. And Paul said, I know this secret. 
There are people who have told me, whenever there is a lack, I know our secret is when I give, God blesses our family again. So that's your secret, get it done. You got to know what's your secret. As a church, we are praying, not only in all the missions work we are doing, sometimes we need to sow into people's lives who are planting new churches. That's a secret of giving. You see, the church that doesn't sow will not get anything in return. It's a principle of giving. But now Paul is saying a piece of contentment. As a church, when things are low, learn to spend less. It's okay. Somebody say what? Yeah. When you have little, learn to eat less. It's okay. <clears throat> what? It's a piece of contentment. When you have more, celebrate. Paul is saying this art. I know this secret. Now I want you to pay attention to Psalms chapter 25 and verse 14. It's a, a scripture that is hiding inside. And I hope we, we have different texts. Okay, Look at the ESV. The friendship of the Lord is with those who fear him, and he makes known to them his covenant. Can you put the New King James Version? Same. I need to pay attention now. Oh my goodness. You know, when I first saw that scripture, I cried and I cried. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him. And to them, he will show them his covenant. If you read that in the NASB, New American Standard Bible Version, it will say he will show them the secret of his covenants. I found that scripture and I cried, God, teach me that secret, how to be your friend, how to walk with you. Here the Bible says, Paul said, I know that secret. Whenever you are close to God, you will know his secret. He promises you to teach you the secret of the Lord is with those who fear him. With those who know his covenant. He will teach you how to survive in times and challenging. Don't place your attention. You know, the economy is going up, economy is going down. He has always been doing that every day. One president comes, one president goes. Read the book of Judges, read the book of Kings. Every time you're reading the book of Kings, wow, finally, one king who's doing it right, the following year will do something wrong. Then I realized, listen, I want to encourage you. Are you listening? Kings comes and go, but God remains consistent in the country. Hundreds of presidents have come and go, and they did their job, but God is always looking over America. Our faith must be there. Our faith must be consistent. The secret of the Lord is with those who know him and trust him. And Paul said, I know that secret. Though it is humbling, God knows that secret. You know, my brothers and sisters, sometimes we have been corrupted in our minds like a mole, like a residue. Because people say, providence always means it's money. Because we have been corrupted to give, you see. All about money. Being a pastor for many years, I've got friends when they discuss and they talk. Especially the big churches. They need more money. To operate a big church is not cheap. To be honest, right? A friend of mine in Lake City out there. Monthly they need $40,000 to maintain the big building. They spend $4 million. It's not fun, man. It's not fun when you, wow, big church. You know the way they pay. It's not fun. But the Bible says when God provides, your provides, your providence is different. Sometimes you don't need money. You need peace. You need to smile. You need to have a good friend. Sometimes your providence is all the other things except money. So God gives you what you need. Isn't it? Money is not the answer for everything. So please don't just say, God, if I would just have money, I'll be happy. No, it is not true. There are different things that will make you happy. We have been so conditioned and corrupted in the mind. The money is the answer. But Paul says, no, it's not. I know how to have faith that God will provide for. 
God may not, you say, God, I can't go now. I'm sick or whatever else you are praying. God will send an angel to send the money through someone to someone and the money will reach there. Somebody say, amen. It is your prayer, the power, and that's your secret. Paul says, I know that. I knew the secret. You know, my brothers and sisters, sometimes, you know, we are low in cash, but you are rich in faith. Somebody say what? Uh, That's a very weak amen for a great scripture. Let me repeat that. We'll edit that in the video later. (laughs) You can be low in cash, but you are rich in faith. I just call you a scripture, bro. James chapter 2 verse 5. Listen, my beloved brothers. James chapter 2 verse 5. Listen my beloved brothers. Has not God chosen those who are poor in the world. To be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom. Which he has promised to those who love him. Can you believe that? God has chosen the rich. God has also chosen the poor. It is God's economics that we cannot understand. Why sometimes we fall into corruption? The reason is, we try to be rich in a very young age when you observe the retirees who are enjoying the world. Bro, they worked hard and they're enjoying it. You work hard, you'll enjoy it too. You cannot say in a young beginner stage, I want to be just like them. Then work hard, learn their secret and work hard. Not borrow money and live on that. Not cheat money and live on that. One of the sad things about Singapore, let me tell you one, one fact about it, which is an open fact. I'm not, I'm not trying to put it down. Because Singapore has, in per capita, one ratio to four, the, the, the highest rate of millionaires in Southeast Asia, the highest. Every other guy you'll see is a millionaire because of the, the, the properties they own, okay? Because of that, in Southeast Asia put together, you have more millionaires in Singapore. Because of money floating, the scams, especially from China. Sadly, I'm using the word, but not again China, especially sadly. They scam these people and get the money out. Two years ago, the figure was at 300 over million dollars people were scammed. Can you believe that? How can we... How can people be so smart and be so naive to scammers? I've noticed this, you know, in my walk with God. People are so smart in not giving, but when a person scams them, they give in. You know why? They did not protect it in the spirit. They protect it in the flesh. My brothers and listen, brothers and sisters, sometimes for God to bless in your breakthrough, he will first create a need for you to sow. And when you close the window of sowing, the enemy comes and steals. God protect. Don't ask me how to explain all this. I don't know. But it works that way. I wonder why. And I, some of the ladies who were scammed are older people, like 80 years old, 90 years old, 75 years old. They protect all their money from giving to their children. No, I will never. I will never. When I die, I need the money. To do what? Not so much. But then to a scammer, they lose it fifty, hundred thousand dollars in five minutes. Wow. Look at how the enemy can work. You know, the Bible says you are rich in faith. Amen. Amen. Would you be able to say that kind of testimony today? Or would you invest into your spirit man? I will choose to be rich in faith regardless of my accounts balance. I am who I am, not based on how much money I have. I am who I am based on my faith account. You are rich in faith. Your body can be riddled with different medical reports, but you're rich in faith. You're walking for the progression. Somebody say amen. Oh, if the little, if the lady with the issue of blood can crawl and say, if I will just touch Jesus, I'll be healed. If she can do that, How much more crawling we've got to do, man? We think it's humbling. It is think that, oh, it's so shameful. But she did it. And she kept on saying, if I would just touch, 
with all these fellows blocking me. Because the disciples blocked Jesus. Nobody can touch him, you know. So she found a way. I only wonder because all these fellows are wearing skirts. You don't know which one is which. <laughs> Come on, man. They, they did not wear pants. They didn't want the colors. All the fellows were wearing the same ones. Somehow she managed to be drawn towards the rope that carried the power. If I will touch the helm of his rope. They were all Jews. They were all wearing the same. Are you following? She managed to see a difference. Because when you are crawling, you really can't see like this and like that, you know. Very amazing, man, that story. You know what happened to her? If you read the passage of the Bible, after her first miracle of crawling, every other person started crawling as well. They all tried to touch the hem because they knew Jesus, not only his hands was transmitting the power, even his clothes were transmitting the power of God. Oh my goodness. Sometimes your story is going to be the breakthrough for someone else. Be encouraged today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now Paul gave us a catchphrase. He said, I learned this. The Greek word learn means by experience, not by reading books. You have to learn this secret. There is no other way. It is not an imparted knowledge. It is an experiential knowledge. There are many young couples who are here, husbands and wives. Your children are just born. You're going to learn God's providence. You can say a thousand scriptures and you think it's not working. No, God is not going to do magic. He's teaching you the art. Of faith life. Somebody say amen. It may work, it may not work. You got to figure that out. What is your secret? You're going to learn it by experience. So that when you are older, when you're teaching someone or your children, you don't say, I I don't know. I just throw some money into the bag, offering bag, and boom, it happened. No, God didn't do magic. You learn by walking by faith. Somebody say. So Paul learned it. Now he's in his last stage of his life. He's teaching us today that God can provide for you. But he wants you to learn. What is that that is holding you behind? Number two, the first one is the peace of contentment. Number two, the strength of motivation. The famous words we always quote in verse 13, Philippians chapter 4, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. It's a very famous quote. Isn't it? I can do what? Then please do something. (laughs) Don't keep quoting and do nothing. There's a lot of people who quote scriptures in church. I can do all things. I'm telling you who's famous for this. My mother, man. She she lived on that scripture. She basically stood on one toe in that family. Anything you say, I can do all things. She's, She's not educated. She didn't go to school because her mother died. So the family told her to stop schooling when she was 11. Basically, she took care of the household while the five brothers and the other three sisters went to school. Kind of weird when you hear it, but that's what happened, right? She's the eldest among the girls, so they chose her to leave. So when I went to school, you know, you have the school workbooks, A, B, C, alphabet workbooks that you have in Tamil language and in English. I took the Tamil language workbook and I bought the set. I'll come home, I'll tell my mother, you learn how to write, I'll mark you. And she did. She learned how to write. She learned how to read. She taught me Tamil language. She taught me the Tamil Bible of a woman who has never been to school. Why? She stood in the scripture, I can do all things to Christ. Her father was a carpenter, so she basically fixed stuff in her house. She is the workman in the house. My father was different. He does all the media, technical, radio repair stuff. But she is the painter, the carpenter. Her scripture is, I can do all things. But when Jesus came into her heart, she went around preaching the gospel in all the different churches in Singapore and the nations of the world. All her birthdays were spent on India feeding the poor. 
I'll tell her, mother, you know you're not well now, you cannot travel. I can do all things. Oh, God. <laughs> she will not think before she answer. I can do all things. May I encourage you today? When you can do all things, when you are given by heaven to do all things, then for heaven's sake, do something. Don't just quote it. Don't say, I'm believing, you know, I'm believing, you know. I, no, no, this is action word, not a statement of faith sitting in your couch. Yes. Right. I can do all things, it's an action statement. Yes. I can do all things means it's present tense. If you want to see God's providence, if you want to know the secret of blessing, then do something for Jesus. Somebody say, Amen. amen. Got to remember, I can do all things. You know, faith will become weak when you don't do nothing. Faith is an action word. It is given for you to exercise it. Faith will grow as you put pressure into it. Somebody say, what? Amen. Why is God allowing the pressure in my life? He wants your faith to grow. Faith only grows when you have pressure. You will not know the strength of your faith. Oh, but faith grows by hearing the word. Absolutely. It grows by hearing. You will only know the strength when you are tested. Yes. If not, you won't know what your faith can do. Hello? Yes. Kenneth Hagin said these words. Build your strength when you are not being opposed. When everything is okay, that's the time to build your faith, build your strength in God. Because when sickness and challenge and lacks comes, you need to use that faith. It's not a time to, oh, mambo jambo, I believe in this, I believe in that. No, 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 it's not that time. You build it when everything is okay and you use it when you need it. Somebody say? Amen. I want you to understand this secret, you see. I can do all things. The second one I want to remember, faith becomes weak when your mind thinks like the world. I want you to think about it. Faith becomes weak when you, your heart is filled with doubts. Faith becomes weak. It doesn't generate, remember what Jesus said? I couldn't do miracles because they, there was a lack of faith. The second thing to remember in the second part of motivation, you can only do things through Him. God wants to remind us. You have your motivation through Christ, your enablement through Christ, your power through Christ. You got to make sure you are through Him. Holy Spirit showed me something, man. It just knocked me off. Turn with me to... John chapter 10. In John chapter 10, one of the famous I am statements of Jesus. Look at verse 9. John chapter 10, verse 9. He said, I am the word. Let's all say one, two, three. I am the door. I am the door. And he said, Listen, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find what? Pasture. I can do all things through him. I am the door. If you want to find pasture, you know, when you find the pasture, listen, God is giving us a wisdom now. Say the word wisdom. God is giving us a secret. The secret of wisdom is this. When you are blessed, somebody thinks, some people think that when you are blessed, it's only a one-time deal. When you find the door, he gives you the grace to go in and out anytime. It works for you. It's not a one-time healing. When you know the secret of healing in your life, it will always work for you. Amen. My mother had her strength. She had a weakness. But man, I'm telling you in the family, when it comes to providence and healing, she's the queen. Nobody can touch her. When it comes to demons and stuff, she becomes weak. She will ask us to stand in prayer. When it comes to healing, nobody can touch her. Why? In 1983, she received a first healing from cancer, womb cancer. Jesus appeared to her in a cross and she saw with her eyes open in a, uh, in a revival crusade. And she accepted Jesus even though she's from a Catholic background. 
She gave her life to God. Somehow, that healing gift or grace that she received worked for her till the end. Four times cancer came in and out. She just went in and out of that secret door and she was healed all the time. And why did she die? When her time was up, God stopped. It's time to come home. But this is the door God wants us to find. Where you will go in and out and find your pasture. Isn't that beautiful? I am the door. I can do all things through him. The thing is when we find the pasture, we don't want to go through Christ anymore. We go by the side road because we do the enemy tactics. We are afraid when I go through Jesus, I have to ask his permission. I don't think so, I can. I'll go by the side. The enemy will rob you. I can do all things as long as Jesus is the authorizing, authenticator of what you're doing in your life. Somebody say amen. amen. You will find the pasture. Somebody say what? Amen. When you walk through Jesus, you will not find lack. Come on, man. David said, I've been young and I've been old. I've never seen the righteous suffer for bread. Oh, God. But that fellow could say that day, that time, how much more you and I can say when food is all around us? If you can die without food, you're blind. It's everywhere. Go and ask someone, they will bless you. Somebody say, what? Nobody gives me. Because you didn't give to anybody, that's why. You close your eyes of mercy when people came towards you. Because give and that shall be given unto you, you say. Right. Only through him we have to remember. I want to give you the third blessing. The strength of motivation. Man, I'm telling you, what an error. Look at verse 19. The third one is learning to have the providence of life. I'll wrap it up in less than 15 minutes. <clears throat> I can do all things. But let me finish the word strengthens me. Remember grace always strengthens you. You cannot say I walk with God and I got nothing. No. You walk with God, you'll always be strengthened. Amen. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, you and I need to be God honoring people. Don't bring down the things of God. God honoring people. Are you ready for the error now? The thing that shocked me, are you ready? Yes. Look at verse 19. I just repent. I say, God, how can I miss it? And the third thing I want to encourage, especially Lauren, God's providence over your life. And it says, my God, can we say? All read together, are you ready? Yes. One, two, three, go. And my God... Hey, hey, hello, hello, little children, get together again. And my God will supply according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. So where did I go wrong? My heart was upset. Where did I go wrong? I've been walking with God for 40 years. How can I, could I have got it wrong? The error was the error of personalization. You know, when you personalize scripture, right? You take a promise, you personalize it. So how do we always say this? My God shall supply my need, every need of mine, because you're supposed to personalize it. My God shall supply my needs. I've been taught how to personalize. Nothing is wrong, but in personalizing, I have forgotten the true intentions of God's providence. That prayer is a prayer of blessing to someone else. My God shall supply every need of yours. I forgot about that. How can I have made such an error? It broke my heart. In learning to personalize myself, I've forgotten that prayer is a prayer of blessing to someone else. Not just about me and my family. It is a prayer you must bless others. The way you pray for yourself, you see. 
You don't even shot one inch. I remember I prayed for a real estate agent in, in Singapore, you know. They said, Pastor, we are going to sell our house, okay? And we're going to buy another house. Praise God, you know. Please pray that we will sell to a higher bidder. And please pray the other fellow who's selling will sell as low as possible. So then my question was, what if the other seller that you like is a fellow Christian? How can I pray such a prayer? Say, Pastor, all that I don't know, can you pray? I said, I'm sorry. I will not get involved in the flesh. If God blesses you, so must God bless him. You want me to pray that you will prosper, I will pray that he prospers too. You see, I am not here about the dollars and cents. God knows how to supply your every need of yours. But here is a blessing to someone else. My brother and sister, your heart must be so rich in faith before you can even use this scripture to bless somebody. You must, your heart must be overflowing in faith before you can see around you according to his riches. So that error, it, it just troubled me so much. I realized how much more we have taught the people how to be so selfish in their prayer. It's all about me, a lot about my family. It's all about my company. Or oh, I must prosper, they must come down. What? You see, when God wants to prosper you, he doesn't need to bring anybody down. He can lift you up so high. Somebody say what? Amen. Somebody say? Amen. If you know how to walk in the currency of heaven, of providence, you can walk in any part of the world. Singapore is number uh, one. It was number one. Now it's top five expensive countries in the world to leave. God taught me then. I want to give you a secret of being blessed. Can I say that? Yes. Learn to bless the country. Learn to bless USA. Learn to bless your leaders, whoever the leaders are. Learn to bless them. Don't open your big yakky mouth and complain about everything under the sun. The moment you curse the land you are in, that, yeah, that, that land will not yield its produce. How did I learn that? God has to correct me, you see. In the year 2000, uh, 1996, he was teaching me this attitude. Oh, you know this government. Oh, you know this. Oh, you know that. Oh, you know everything that. You know it's so difficult to live. So difficult to do that. So difficult. To, so expensive. So expensive. God said, if you don't bless the land you are living, how can I lift you up? So what is expensive? Am I so short that I cannot provide? Somebody what? Tell your neighbor, pastor is actually talking about you now. Husband and wives, a husband and wives, fathers and mothers, learn to pray with your children that God will provide all our needs. Doesn't matter what in America, you know, you got to do this, you got to get a scholarship. Hello, you don't have to know anything, you need to know the provider first. You need to get hooked up to the provider. Parents, can I encourage you, don't behave like a God in your children's life. You are a parent. God is the Almighty. That means when you can't do something, pray together, God will provide. Amen. Don't give them the assurance, I'll do everything I can to help you. No, God is the only one who has the right to say those words. Yes. And parents, uh, children, I want to tell you something. Don't blame your parents for your lacks. Don't blame your parents for what they didn't give you. You have a God to pray for. You got a God to run after. When your parents can't give, there is a God who will continue that providence. Somebody say amen. amen. Until you learn this secret, you'll be stuck in the basic income of your parents' net income. You'll get stuck there. Instead of learning to be super abounded, and then God will use you to bless your family in return. Somebody say what? Now, I'm telling you not because it's a nice formula and theory. I'm saying it because this is where I'm living, me and my brother. How God lifted us up out of that limitations. How can I say my father didn't do this, my father didn't do that? He only did what he was supposed to be doing. He placed food on the table. 
We never had to back outside. Beyond that point, he could not do anything. Because he came as a laborer in the country. There was limitations of how much he could get. Satan got a better part of him and took the prosperity away. But God blessed the children who serve God and restores the family's honor. Somebody say what? Amen. Today we share the blessings. We never say it's mine. We share it with everybody else. Me and my family members, we are not afraid to give money away because our God is our provider. May I encourage you. May I encourage you. My God shall supply all our needs. The word supply means God will top it up. Every need, your need changes. Sometimes it's health, peace, family salvation. Sometimes it's just clothes. You need God to give you clothes. When we brought clothes to Indonesia, you know what the pastor's wife and the pastor told us with tears. They say, listen, I'm just telling you, uh, not exaggerated, the exact words they said. Even if you have socks or underwears which are holes, because Singaporeans, we throw it away. He said, please don't. Bring it to us. We will sew it and use it because we don't have money to buy. You know how heartbroken when you, when you hear such things? Yeah. Our church in Singapore has sent boxes of clothes during storms and disasters we always tell our church members when the ladies will usually gather, the hall will be full of clothes and they will iron the clothes and fold it up. Because when you give to someone, give with respect. Yes. 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 Don't give it as though you are throwing a junk, you'll come and pick it up. Show some dignity. Show some respect. Because it takes a lot of humility to take someone else's clothes, you know. My brothers and sisters, God shall supply their need. Some of them needed shoes. Some of the children needed toys. And our children, how many times parents you complain, oh, how many toys we have in the house? Give it away. Yeah. Why are you crying? Why are you complaining? Give it away. Because as you give, it shall be given unto you. I taught our children that. You want new toys, Samuel? Hey, yeah, daddy. Okay, let's, can we give this one? So he will choose all the things he wants to give away. There are some favorites, you know. Every year it becomes a Christmas, the shoebox giving thing. Shoebox giving is an American term. It's important into Singapore. We decided to use it. My God shall supply all your needs. May I finish with this line? Look at that scripture. My God will supply every need of yours. According to his riches in glory in Christ. May I finish with this. In all your living, in all your getting, in all your faith, in all your secret. In all your providence. There is only one thing you live for. For the glory of Christ. Amen. Let God get the glory. Live for his glory. Share his glory. Give him all the glory. Don't be prideful in your living. Don't be prideful in your testimony. Be humble when people ask you, how is that God is healing you and not me? Humble yourself and share with humility that is through the grace But I'm praying. Share with them the scriptures. Share with them your prayer partners. Take their name and pray for them. Give God the glory. Can we all stand up together? Can I ask the worship team to come stand by? Come Linda, come up and just stand by. Guys, I want to just want ask you and those who are watching online, in this day when we are just celebrating in faith of the 4th of July, but this is one secret we have overlooked. And I ask you humbly as God's servant to pray with me so that this mold, this residue can be broken. You know what is that? You're going to pray for your neighbor, whoever your neighbor is. You just don't know God. I pray for my brother who is on my right, all my sisters on my left, that every need of theirs will be fulfilled. 
We are breaking that ice today that God can restore what the enemy has stolen from you. If you are praying for your health, if you are praying for joy, if you are praying for happy family, if you are praying for all the different things, if you are praying for a good medical report, you are praying for things that you have lost. I can name different things because I know a lot of people of you. I pray that God will restore. Somehow God always says, the blessings of your later life will be much more than the blessings of the former. Some of my mother's friends told my mother, both of your boys are going to bring both of you, my father and mother, to the streets. Y'all are going to beg for money because these two fellas, instead of working, they are serving God in the ministry. That's how they were told 30 years ago. Every time my mother's friends will see her, is your children giving any money? Are they looking after you? In her dying moments, you know, I didn't know until we sat down. All the money that were given to her from the children, she saved up a big amount, man, and she divided to the grandchildren. I couldn't believe. That lady, instead of using it, she saved it up for others. And I remember what the Bible says. You'll have enough treasure to give your children and your children's children. The secret of contentment. And one day I asked her, why are you not spending? I have you all and you all are living for God. That's all I need. My brothers and sisters, can we walk in that level of faith today? And Lauren, I bless you that you will walk in God's providence. People will write funny stories, you know, missionary letters, funny stories, I'm telling you. <laughs> Don't learn those art. Learn the Bible way. You tell the truth and God will move hearts. And church, if that is true for Lauren, right after prayer, I want to collect an offering for this girl. I want to bless her because she's one of our daughters, okay? Yes. As we sow into her, you'll have a share in the work that she's doing. Whatever God puts in your heart, I know today we did a lot of things collecting here, collecting there. Angela and I will have the privilege to bless her. Are you ready to bless? The Bible says, my God will supply every need of yours. Not mine. Today's focus is not me. Yours. In Christ Jesus. We take a moment to pray. Come on. Father, I want to thank you today. The lies of the enemy is being broken in Jesus' name. We realize, God, you have always been a caring father. You have always been Jehovah Jireh. You have always been our provider. You always knew every need even before we open our mouths. We thank you today. On this day we pray that America is provided for. Every son and daughter is provided for. That true riches of the kingdom will be revealed in Jesus' name. That God, we are not afraid to give because you are our provider. Today you have taught us how to bless another, how to pray for another. For my God shall supply every need of yours. As a shepherd, as your servant, as your son, I pray and bless this flock. And for those sons and daughters who are watching online, that God, they will learn the secret of contentment. They will learn the joy of walking with you. They will learn the blessings of a provided life. How to remain in and out of Jesus through the door that we will find the pasture. I thank you for these God-honoring moments this Sunday. Let each, by each one receive their breakthroughs, their blessings, 
healings, providence, in every different way, their needs being met. We thank you and we honor you in Jesus' name. I pray the love of God, our Father. The blessings of Jesus, the Son of God. The sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Be with each one of us and our children today, tomorrow, and forevermore in Christ Jesus. Amen.